Hello everyone, welcome back to the course Energy Resources, Economics and Sustainability. In the past few classes, we have been discussing the basics of economics, their applications to energy related projects. We have been discussing what are the different kinds of matrices or methods that might be used to understand the applicability, profitability of uh, energy based project. Some of the uh, models or some of the methodologies that we discussed included the net present value, the internal rate of return, the external rate of return, average return on books, the payback period, the profitability index, the benefit to cost ratio. We tried to analyze what would be the relative advantages and disadvantages of each of the methodology. So, if you remember in the last few classes, we have been discussing that any uh, process or any methodology for project appeasement or a financial appraisal should have three basic functions. It should consider the whole lifetime of the project. It should consider the cash flows that are occurring throughout the life of the project. And it should also be taking into account the time equivalence of money, the future value of money with respect to the present value and vice versa. Now, in today's class, uh, I would want to put some of these uh, lessons into practice. So, we will try to make a financial model for, uh, for a tentative uh, wind farm that is expected to come up. We will do the calculations together and for that I will be using the MS Excel uh, tool and I would encourage you people to also uh, work out this example with me using any spreadsheets uh, software uh, that would do. Uh, specifically, I would be using the MS Excel, but you are free to use any software and it might be of worth if you want to form this, uh, this example with me as we proceed. So, what we will be doing is we will take a case study of, uh, of a wind farm that is supposed to come up in the neighborhood. Uh, I am rating the wind farm having a nominal power rating of around 50 megawatt that might be good for a, uh, for a small city. The investment that it would require tends to be around 862.5 crores. Uh, this is uh, the normal range in which energy related projects are expected to happen. The, uh, the normal expense uh, spans over few hundred crores and this is what you can expect for a large wind based farm. And this expenses will not be occurring at one instance. Normally these kinds of plants take a couple of years for the direction, commissioning. And before that, you have to make an engineering drawing, get the DPRs ready. So, it happens over a span of 3 to 5 years. So, in this particular example, I would be assuming that this expense is occurring over the span of 3 years. So, I will be spending around 225 crores of the total 862.5, envisioned 862.5 crores in the first year, which will mainly go towards the preparation of DPRs then the different permits, the different environmental clearances that you would need, um, and the, and the different uh, studies that you would want to take in. Then and the actual construction will start towards the end of the year and would mainly be accomplished in the second year and that is where I would be spending major chunk of the money. So, in this case I have assumed like almost 550, uh, 525 crores would be spent in the uh, second year. And in this case, I am uh, mentioning it year 1 because the first year is normally uh, uh, mentioned as e, uh, year 0. So, the second year would be mentioned as year 1 and that is when the most of the wind turbines and the generators would be installed. Then comes the final year where you would be having the pre-commissioning, you will be testing it for a, uh, for a good time to see everything is working nicely because any problem that occurs later on could have uh, great financial implications. And you would normally uh, uh, start with some kind of production towards the end of the second year, not maybe not, not be 100 percent, maybe 50 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent, something like that. And that is when uh, the plant is expected to be half commissioned. And after that, it is expected to operate uh, for, uh, for around 12 years. Then uh, since uh, you, uh, you would understand that uh, 862 crores is not a small amount, but it is a very heavy amount and no um, a big corporate would, to want it, would want to put all of its own personal money. And that is why like we have taken uh, a debt to equity ratio. A majority of uh, the money that would be needed to be investment uh, will come from the debt which uh, would be taken from the market. In this case, it is assumed that almost 487.5 crores will be taken from the market with the help of 12 year bonds. 
and it will be bearing 6% interest rate. So what is going to happen is I'm going to uh, issue bonds for this amount and will be selling this in the market. And, and this bonds will be returned uh, to the buyer at the end of 12 years. And meanwhile, every year, uh, the corporate will be given uh, will be giving a 6% interest rate on the amount of the bond. So this um, methodology how the amount of bond is calculated we have understood with the help of simple example in the last few classes. And, and then and the equity is something uh, the corporate would want to put its own fund in and in this case we have assumed that the corporate would be putting around 375 crores of equity. So normally in the energy related uh, projects you would have the debt to equity ratio as it is commonly known as 50-50 or 70-30. And uh, for the projects that are of national importance and that are expected to give a very good return in the future, and the debt to equity ratio may go even higher to around 80 to 20. And this kind of ratio would affect on the overall economics as we will see in the business model. So normally you can assume that the equity, uh, debt to equity ratio for energy related projects would vary from 50 to, 50 to 70 to 30 ratio. Then we get most of the revenues from a project like this from the production of electricity. And in this case, uh, uh, it is an approximation that this plant will be able to produce around 215 into 10 to power 6 kilowatt hour of electricity. I have used kilowatt hour because that is the normal understanding for a unit and that is going to happen per year. Uh, it is assumed that zero electricity will be produced in the year 0 and 1 that is when like in the first uh, first year or the year zero, it's basically the drawing, the engineering drawings that are taking place. And in the first year, it's mainly the erection taking place. It's uh, just at the second year that we have the commissioning and the pre-commissioning, and we can expect that plant would be uh, working at 80% of its rated capacity. And by the next year, it should be able to function at 100% capacity. So this is the, a simple assumption, again uh, taken care uh, in this business model. In reality, we can expect that these kinds of plant would have some kind of degradation happening every year. So either that would call for a, a, a reduction in the plant operating capacity year-wise or addition of more capacity as you proceed. So if you are going uh, with a power purchase agreement with a DISCOM, you would want to keep the electricity production rate to be a constant and you might want to install more turbines as this degradation happening. Again, as I mentioned, the useful life for a project like this would be 12 years. And we can assume that at the end of 14th year, when uh, we, uh, we, the corporate has done away with the plant, it can sell the plant to another corporate uh, or any other entity who would want to uh, run this plant. And the salvage value in this case is assumed to be around 495 crores. This would depend upon like uh, the predictions made by the managers or the engineering team, how good the plant would be. And if we see how the uh, 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 like how the capex is normally distributed, so in uh, the energy related uh, field, you can have different plants coming up in different span of time. So if you are looking towards a plant like battery storage, it might come in a, a relatively small amount of time, say one year. So in that case, you can assume like hundred percent of capex is going in one year. But in majority of cases, you can see that it's going to span from two to five years. So in this case, in case we are not aware how to distribute uh, the capex, which is normally coming from the DPS, we can make uh, some informed choices. And this is a normal uh, uh, process or the normal way in which distribution is taking place. So if the plant is getting installed in two years, you can install, uh, you can uh, basic, basically attribute 50% to each year. In case it is taking three years, you might want to attribute 30% to the first year, then maximum goes to this 45% uh, to the second year, and then at the remaining 25 in the last year. If it goes for four years, maybe it would increase to 32% in the second year and then reduce uh, slightly towards the second and the third year. Then in case of five years, you would gradually increase uh, till around 36% in the fourth year and 14% uh, in the last year. So if you're looking towards a coal based or coal fired power plant, it would typically take four to five years and these are the data for a coal based power plant. Other plants like solar plants might take between one to two years. Hydro are, are plants again can take between three to five years into construction. So that's a huge time in itself and the capex need to be divided accordingly. And then in this uh, particular case, uh, we would also have certain fixed cost and the, one of the major fixed cost would be the uh, the lease or the rent of the land on which uh, the windmills or the wind turbines are being installed. And in that, in this case, uh, that starts from year zero. 
So it doesn't depend upon when the plant starts operating, it starts uh, from the day you would have uh, started the installation process. And in this case, we have assumed that and this would amount to around 2.62 crores per year and it starts from year zero because the land rent and other facilities uh, uh, like uh, uh, like some of the labor that would be involved, the managerial staff that would be involved would start from year zero. And uh, it is expected that this would increase uh, at a rate of 3% per year uh, to counter the inflation. So anything that you buy in the market would uh, would have a yearly increase rate and in this case we have assumed that the fixed cost would increase at, at a nominal rate of 3%. Then there is another cost which is called the operating or the variable cost that would vary according to operation of the plant. And in this case I have assumed like this would be around uh, 3 lakh or uh, 3, 3 crores rupees a year and this starts from year 2 when the plant is in operation. So in the year 2 as we have understood the plant would be operating at around 80% of the capacity and then 100% of the capacity thereafter. So I am assuming around 3 crores a year is spent and this is uh, mainly the operating cost in terms of uh, the uh, like uh, uh, the raw material if you are getting from another plant. In this case of course there will be no raw material but the salaries of some of the operating staff and uh, uh, one of the major things in the operating cost. Uh, then uh, you would derive all of your revenue to say from the price of the electricity. Now you would need to sell the electricity at a good rate so that people are able to buy it and you can generate the revenue. So in this case I have assumed a rate of rupees 3 per kilowatt hour which is slightly uh, on a lower end as far as conditions in India are concerned but still like this would be somewhat nearer to what you pay in your homes or lesser than what you pay in your homes. But I am just thinking of the generation one because after this there would be a supply and distribution and that has its own losses. By the time it reaches your houses or your offices it might have a greater value. And again this electricity price I am expected would increase at a rate of 2% per year. Now this corporate uh, who is making up this uh, uh, like wind farm would also be liable to pay some taxes on the profit that it is generating. So in this case I have assumed a tax of around 28%. Again, uh, and this tax is normally governed by very complex tax laws. Normally, the corporates have a couple of tax consultants or uh, CA sitting who would guide the company to have uh, to form certain policies so that they can uh, derive the maximum uh, benefit from the tax policies of a particular country. And this tax policies would be very different for two different countries. But in this case, for the simplicity of understanding, I have assumed the tax would be uh, charged at 28% uh, of the profit. And then we also need to take into account the depreciation. Now depreciation will, take, will come into account when we would have to take the capex into the tax calculations. So this is basically we would have to divide the capex at a rate in which it depreciates so that it can derive, uh, give a benefit to the corporate owner. So in this case I have taken a very basic case in which we have taken a depreciation that is straight line and that is happening at 10 years uh, for 10 years and since uh, and the, uh, 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 the plant is getting installed in 3 years the depreciation would have different values in different years. So we will just try that with the help of an excel sheet and the discount rate uh, I am considering in this case to be 15%. Uh, so it, it might uh, come that like these kinds of plants or investment are a bit risky so the, uh, so the corporate uh, would or the corporate management would want uh, to have a higher discount rate for this kind of investment and that is why it has been chosen to be 15%. So first thing let us try to see how the, how the depreciation will take place in this kind of plant. So let us uh, move towards a simple excel sheet. So in the excel sheet that you can see in front of you. Uh, you can see uh, the years on the top and then on the first column is the capital investment that is happening over the span of 3 years. So in the first year I am spending around 225 crores then 525 crores in the second year which is uh, termed as e year 1 and third year around 112.5 crore rupees. So if I say the depreciation of the first trench that is happening uh, of the payment that is happening of around 225 crores in year 0. So this will be almost uh, uh, the initial amount divided by 10 and this would go on for the next 10 years and I would continue it till the year 9. So this is equal till the 9 years and then the second payment is happening of around 525 crores and this is happening in the year 1. And this again then I would be dividing into 10 different fractions equally divided upon the next 10 years. So this goes from year 1 
uh, till year 10 and it is equally divided among all the years and this is what I mean by straight line depreciation where the depreciation is happening linearly over the lifespan and finally the depreciation for the expenses in year 3 which happens to be around 112.5 crores again I will be dividing that uh, for the next 10 years which starts from year 2 and goes all the way till uh, year sorry for this and goes all the way till year 11 and if I would have to take the cumulative depreciation that is happening over the years I will just add these three terms. So the total sum of the depreciation that will be taken care of would be a sum of or the depreciation for the first tranche of investment plus the second and plus the third and so the first year and the depreciation would be just uh, 20 uh, uh, like uh, 22 lakhs 50,000 and no 22 lakhs like uh, uh, and then at 22 crores and 50 lakhs and this will keep on increasing and it will increase, uh, it will stabilize from the year 2 to year 9, then decrease and then finally decrease. So you would have around uh, 22 crores, 50 lakhs for the first year, then around 75 crores for the second year, 86 crores, point, uh, 25 uh, lakhs for the sec second year onwards and it remains constant because there is no more investment happening after that. It stays similar for the year 9 and then uh, it again decreases in year 10 and finally comes to around 11 crores in the year 11. So this is how I will be calculating the depreciation in which the investment is happening over the span of few years. Again in the slides I am presenting the same things that the depreciation would uh, start from the year 0 and then increase, stabilize uh, at around 86, 86 crores, 25 lakhs from the year 2 to 9. It would stay at 63 crores for the year 10 and around uh, 11 crores for the year 11. Uh, then further we also need to understand how the calculations would be made. So the first uh, calculation that would be interesting is the total revenue. Now the total revenue would be coming from three different aspects. The first and the major one should be the revenue from the electricity. The electricity that you are generating and selling in the market for rupees 3 at the year 2 and then there is a subsequent increase. Then there would be a bond revenue that will happen in the year 0 when you are selling the bonds and taking capital from the market which you are going to use for the building up of the plant. And finally this, there would be a salvage value which means you would be selling the plant after its uh, useful life for the corporate and that is going to happen in the last year. So these will be the three major sources of revenue. Then if you talk about the cost, the cost will be in terms of the capital investment that is going to happen over the span of the first three years. Then the fixed cost, uh, an example would be the land leasing. Then the variable cost, which in terms of the employment that is generating in terms of the uh, plant operators. You would also be paying an interest on the bonds that you have sold in the year zero. And finally, in, in the one year from the last, you would be also repaying the bond back to the people from whom you have taken uh, the money and there is a, a bond repayment that will be happening. Then. Uh, uh, based upon this cost and revenue, you would be able to calculate your pre-tax income. So pre-tax income is basically uh, the profit on which uh, you would be uh, taxed by the tax laws of a particular country. So in this case, I am taking a very simple case in which you would have the total revenues except the bond revenue. Now bond revenue is something that is used for raising the capital and that I will be taking in the form of depreciation. So I will be excluding the bond revenue but I will be taking all the revenues which includes the electricity. Then I would be taking the closing cost of the plant if there is any. Then the fixed cost as well as the variable cost and the interest on the bond that I will be paying on the yearly basis. So these are basically the yearly or the annual. Um, uh, uh, annual expenses or uh, revenue that I am generating. Then my taxable income would basically be the pre-tax income minus the depreciation. So in this case depreciation is basically a methodology for uh, uh, spreading out the capex throughout the life so that it gives benefit to the plant owner. The tax would be the taxable income into the tax rate which is applicable to me 
So in this case, it has been assumed that the tax rate is 28%. And in many countries, you would also have a tax credit which is given by the specific countries. Uh, and the advantage of this tax credit or, uh, is that it wants to encourage people to invest in energy related projects that could be used for the larger good of the people. So, and so uh, if there is any tax credit, you would have a subtraction of that. Plus, it needs to be understand that in the first few years when you are making capital investment, uh, the tax comes out to be negative. And in this case, if the corporate wants to make a utilization of these uh, the government policies, it should have other businesses that are having a positive uh, uh, tax or that are profit making. Uh, unless the corporate has some other operations or some other verticals which are profit making, the, co uh, the corporate might not be able to make use of uh, the tax laws of a country at, in the present moment and it might want to take you make use of this in the future but again that would be discounted by uh, the changing value of money. So in this case I am assuming that the corporate in itself is a big entity which has many profit making businesses and this is just one of the ways uh, in one of the uh, uh, places it has invested and so any negative tax that might come in the first few years it can take a benefit of those negative tax in some other businesses. Then the cash flows would be basically the total revenue minus the total cash cost that is uh, that the corporate incurs minus the tax it pays. And the discount factor of any year we all understand would be 1 divided by 1 plus the discount rate which in this case I have assumed to be 15 percent and all of it should be raised to the number of years that has passed uh, beyond which the plant has been into operation or the plant uh, from the year that is present. And then we will be uh, uh, like multiplying this factor with the total cash flow and this gives us the discounted cash flow. I add the total cash flows and this gives me the net present value of all the cash flows that are occurring throughout the life of the project. Now let us try to understand this with the help of the same example where we are putting in uh, or trying to analyze the wind farm and I have given uh, you the different types of assumptions being made. Uh, Again, uh, let me put it. This is a hypothetical case that we uh, that we are putting up, and the major, the main aim of this example is to help us understand how these calculations are done. Uh, so this is not exactly the calculation will be done in the corporate, which would have uh, many complexities involved. But this is a very simplistic way of showing how the calculations might be carried out. So let us go back uh, to the Excel sheet. Okay, so I hope everyone can see the Excel sheet in front of you. So what we have on the top are the different years which start from year 0, uh, year 1 and all the way till year 14 uh, when the plant or the uh, corporate would want to sell its business. And we have divided then the cash flows into three different sections. One is the first one is the revenue, the second one is the cost that would be incurred and final tax calculation and the NPV. So I put in some tentative value to help us uh, do this calculation faster. Uh, so the first thing uh, is the revenue and the majority of the revenue that we would, uh, this plant would see would come from um, the sale of electricity. And for this, uh, the starting price of electricity as of today has been assumed to be 3 rupees. And this is expected to increase at a rate of around 3% in the future. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have this factor uh, being taken into account. So this would be into point uh, okay no uh, not three but two percent increase per year. Okay sorry. So we'll have this uh, electricity price increasing at two percent per year. So in the first year, if the price was 3 rupees per kilowatt hour per unit, this would increase to around 3.06 rupees per kilowatt hour. And hence it would be increasing at a rate of 2% every consecutive year. And by the end, we reach the 14th year, the price of electricity would be around 3 rupees 96 pesa or around 4 rupees. Now the second thing would be the electricity that is produced. So the electricity production was around 215 into 10 to power 6 kilowatt hour 
and this 100% uh, capacity was reached uh, th uh, 30 onwards. For the second year, we have assumed that almost 80% of this capacity would be reached and this is what I am putting it for the second year. So, in the second year around uh, uh, like uh, 172 into 10 to power 6 uh, would be the number of units that would be produced. And this remains constant at around 215 into 10 to power 6 uh, units till the year 14. And then in the revenue, I have just multiplied the two factors, which is the price of the electricity and the number of units being generated. And this is something that uh, you can see in here. Uh, so, the, the generation would be 80% uh, in the year 2, it becomes 100% in the year 3. And, and thereafter, we can see uh, there is an increase in the revenue because of the increase in the price of electricity, which is increasing at a rate of 2% per year. Then another source of revenue for the company would be the bonds it would be selling. Uh, so in the first year, it would be selling the bonds of around 487.5 CR. So this is what I have taken into account in the year 0. Then again, it would uh, the plant at the end of the life would be sold at a salvage value of around 495 crores. So this is what you see in the year 14 happening. So let me repeat again, there are going to be two more sources of income. One will be the selling of the bonds for raising the capital and that is going to happen in the year 0. And then we are also going to get some value from the salvage value or selling of the plant after its useful life to the corporate and that would be around 495 crores and that happens at the uh, last year which is uh, 14th year. If I talk about the total revenues, this will be the sum of uh, the three things which is the revenue. Uh, from the electricity uh, supply from the bonds that is primarily happening in the year 0 and the salvage value that is happening in the last year. So, you can see uh, we would have the income being generated, we won't have an income in the uh, second year and the, from third year when the electricity generation starts and this is how the revenue would increase and there would be uh, there is going to be a massive jump in the last year when we are selling the plant. Now, uh, uh, when it comes to cost, uh, we would have the capital investment being spread out through three different years, the first three years. So, I would be investing around 225 crores in the year 1, 525 crores in the year 2 or like the year 1 in this case and then uh, for uh, the year 2, it would be 112.5 crores. Then the plant would also have the fixed cost and this fixed cost uh, have been assumed to be around 2 crores, uh, 62 crores and 50 lakhs uh, for the year 0 and then this is expected to increase at the rate of uh, 3%. So, let me put that again in here. So, we would have the cost uh, occurring in at around 2 uh, crores, 62 lakhs for the year 0 and this would be increasing into at the rate of 3% and this continues till the last year. Then again we would have the variable cost that would start from the year 2 and this would be 3 crores and there would be again an uh, uh, increase in this and that, that yearly increment will be 5 percent. So, I am assuming like it would be 3 crores at the year 2 and thereafter it increases at the rate of 5 percent. And so, let me increase that for the future years and this again continues um, till the last year which is the 14th year in this calculation and this is how it goes. Further, we would also be paying an interest on the bonds uh, that have been uh, taken place and this interest would be sim, uh, 6 percent. So, what I will be doing is I know that and this is uh, the bond that I have been selling and let me put in a dollar sign so that this cell does not change and I multiply that with point, uh, 0.06 which is uh, the interest that I would be paying on this bonds and this happens till the year I may paying the bonds back or the year 13th. So, year 13th is the year that I will be paying the bonds back and, uh, and this payment I will be making till one year before that. So, I will be taking 6 percent of the total amount 
from the bonds and I'll be paying the interest for the years after which I've taken the bond and till one year before till which I've returned the bonds back which will be year 12th in this case and in 13th year I'll be paying the same amount back which is 487.5 crores to the people from whom I've taken uh, this money. So if I take the total cost for this particular project this would be the sum of of, uh, of like five different things which will be the capital investment which is happening over the three years the fixed cost which is happening uh, throughout the lifespan the same with the variable cost that starts from the year two and then continues to the last year the interest on bond that you know, begins from the year that i have taken sold the bonds in the market till the last year and finally the bond repayment that will be happening and i've assumed that that happens in in, in the year uh, one year uh, minus the final year of the project and this is how my total cost would look like now i would want to calculate my pre-tax income so the pre-tax income as we have discussed in the slides uh, before as well would include the revenue from the electricity the salvage value so these are the only sources of income that i will consider and then uh, uh, the uh, the cost that incurred in the form of the fixed cost the variable cost and the interest on bonds so this will be my pre-tax income so, and, and let me take that for the next 14 years or so then comes the depreciation now depreciation we have discussed in the uh, in the earlier sheet how that is calculated so i'll just copy paste that depreciation for the calculation for which we have already done So this is the depreciation that we have assumed based on the straight line uh, methodology and this depreciation okay would be happening uh, uh, till uh, the last year uh, or like till the year that uh, uh, till the year 11th as we have calculated and then in this particular case i'm not taking a tax credit this will come on in the future class we'll be discussing the different kind of policies so i'm not taking the tax credit in here and if I talk about the taxable income, so the taxable income would be the total income minus the depreciation. So depreciation basically represents the spreading out of the capex for a period, and uh, and this is the capex will be put put on by the by the company either through debt or the equity. And uh, I would subtract this uh, depreciation from the total income. And so this is my taxable income. And and let me and just put in the graph to calculate the taxable income and that goes in till the last year or the year 14th and finally I'll be paying a tax which would be at the rate of 28% of the whole and uh, let us do this calculation as well so for the tax I have assumed that it will be uh, and, and the taxable income into 28% and subtract any tax credit so in this case there are no tax credit so the B22 row remains empty so it's basically 28% of the taxable income and so an interesting thing that we see here that uh, the tax that we have calculated here comes out to be negative in the first uh, or many of the uh, years and this is um, basically because the plant is unable to generate any profit so as i've uh, told earlier in order to uh, derive benefit from this the company needs to have other businesses which are profit making so that this negative tax could be adjusted uh, against the other uh, areas where uh, the company can save uh, uh, tax where it is liable to pay tax so this is uh, important in case you're talking about a startup or a small entity which might not have other profit making entities so this tax uh, credits or the tax might be able to be utilized in the future years depending on the tax policy of a particular country then coming to the cash flow the cash flow would be nothing but the revenue minusing uh, subtracting the cost subtracting the tax so we have the total revenue the total cost and the total tax so i have the revenue that is where i'm making getting the money and i'm spending the money in terms of cost and as also in terms of tax so this is my total cash flow that is happening and this cash flow can be seen for the 
total of 14 years. Finally, I would also want to put in the time value of money or the time equivalence of money and this is where I would have to put in a discount factor. So I would be starting from the present year and uh, taking my discount rate of 15 years, I would be calculating the discount factor. Um, and this normal formula would be 1 divided by 1 plus the discount rate raised to the uh, present year and this is what we have in the formula bar above and I will just carry on this calculation for the next 14 years again and finally we would want to calculate the discounted cash flows which would be nothing but the cash flow multiplied by the discount factor which is happening in here so it stays as such in the year 0 but as we proceed in the future we can see that the value of depreciating uh, or uh, the money is depreciating and it, 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 it is almost equivalent to just 14 percent of the total money when it comes to the last year. And if I talk uh, about the total NPV which would be nothing but the sum of all these cash flows. So the cash flow taking uh, place from the year 0 till the last year which is the year 14 and the sum of the total would be uh, and the total NPV and uh, you see that it's negative. So when I'm, wherever I'm using an, a bracket, this means the value comes out to be negative. And we can see that this whole process uh, is not very profit making. It has a negative cash, cash flows and with the present uh, uh, conditions, the corporate might not want to go for it. Again, we can see that the cash flow would be, uh, would be changing uh, throughout uh, with the years. So if you see, uh, a graph and this is how the cash flows would look like for the different years you would have a big positive in the first year that is when you will be selling the bonds then a big negative when the investment is occurring and then you would have uh, some cash flows because of the generation they keep on reducing because of the time value of money any profit that you make in the future would have very less value in the present and as we can see because of the discount rate it um, becomes very less and then uh, towards the last year uh, you would have the bond repayment as well as the salvage value uh, uh, expenses being occurring. So we can see that there's a lot of factors that would affect the profitability of the project and this is something we'll be discussing in, in, in the next class. But for this class uh, uh, let us uh, try to understand that these kind of calculations are very sensitive to the discount rate that we would have chosen. So in this uh, particular case if I were to choose a discount rate of around 5% rather than 15% so in this case I'm making an assumption that the company has installed such kind of plants in the past and uh, has a good amount of experience and th and and has a good amount of experience and uh, like uh, and also has uh, uh, knows that like this kind of plant would be uh, profit making in the future uh, it can go for a smaller discount rate and if i update the discount rate to around 5% rather than 15% and also update uh, the discount factors we can say that for the same cash flows, this plant now comes out to be profitable. So this is making uh, having an uh, NPV of around 5 crores and 51 lakhs and the company would want to go for it. So uh, these are some of the things that would affect the cash flows of a particular uh, plant. And this is, these are some of the aspects that are very, uh, like, uh, very interesting uh, to study. So, uh, so, so in this particular class, we have uh, tried to understand some of the basics of cash flow diagrams and uh, we'll be discussing the same example in the next class as well, where we'll, we will uh, try to understand the effect of certain policies which can help make uh, a plant that is unprofitable at the onset uh, to be profitable with the help of certain policies which might be controlled by the government or some of the assumptions that might be taken in um, by the private entity. So with this, we end today's class. Thank you.